Hi, my name is Michael Japong, and this is the history and evolution of the one-shot, one-take film in history of media arts. And the one-shot, one-take film is basically a film that is shot in one take or is shot to appear as though it is one long, continuous take. And the film that started it all was this film in 1948 called Rope by Alfred Hitchcock. This was the first attempt by anyone to try and shoot a full one take film. And Alfred Hitchcock had a couple technical limitations due to it being 1948. Film reels only lasted for 10 minutes. So he had to shoot several 10 minute takes and then splice them together using movie magic to make it look like one continuous shot. These techniques, in, including uh, having characters or objects passing in front of the screen, or zooming really closely to, and then backing out of certain objects or, or individuals. Interesting thing is in Rope, there are actually two very blatant cuts that are made that help move the story forward. A trifle too delicate, because one of the subjects for our dinner table suddenly rebelled. Like Lazarus, he rose That's a lie! Philip! There's no word of truth in the whole story. I never strangled a chicken in my life. Now look here, Philip, just I because I- I never strangled a chicken and you know it. <laughs> So it actually wasn't a continuous shot film, but it is known and remembered for being that. Even after Rope's critical acclaim, the one-shot film technique never really took off until Alexander Sukharov's Russian Ark. Russian Ark was the first critically acclaimed true one-shot take feature film. The producer of the film, Jens Muir, states in the documentary titled In One Breath that the film, even though it took 90 minutes to film, it actually took them four years to develop. The actual shoot was a one day attempt. They rented out a museum and had to reconstruct the entire museum just to shoot this one take. It wasn't until 2014's Birdman by Alejandro Gonzalez Inarritu that a one shot film would go on to win an Oscar for best picture. In this film, unlike its predecessors, time is not a constraint. So Alejandro makes use of this this freedom by making really artistic and beautiful cuts that make it seem as though it's a one shot, but time can pass more unrealistically, allowing us to experience the whole three days that the film takes place. Soon after that, a film called Victoria by a German uh, filmmaker by the name of Sebastian Schipper creates a film about a bank robbery. The film was ultimately shot three times, but all three times were a one take. And the final one take was the film that we ultimately get to see. And a lot of films since then have continued to, to, uh, to make these true one-shot films. Our most recent one-shot film is a film called 1917, directed by Sam Mendes. And in this movie, he uses all of the transitional techniques you see in one-shot films in history, including new ones where he uses Handicam and has that handicam transition from two people's hands to a crane, which gives the viewer a, a beautiful sense of suspension that wouldn't be possible without it. So in the end, 1917 and Birdman were ultimately influenced by the technical limitations of Alfred Hitchcock's Rope in 1948. And a one-shot film can also be an actual one-take, one-shot film, and that is also very technically impressive. I can't wait to see what one-shot films look like in the future.